background, why did you decide to build a house rather than rent one? Well, I always wanted a home of my own. When they started uh, the South House Homes in Goshen, I knew uh, they were going to come to Farmersville, and we we joined. Had you tried to buy a house before that? Yes, uh huh. We tried, but uh, I was never satisfied. And then I heard about this program coming in, so I thought that we'd wait and get in this program. When was it that you bought this house? Um, we've been here one year in August. How long did it take to build it? Uh, seven months. Seven months. Seven to eight months. Can you describe what the what the process is all about? Um, as I gather, you actually physically built it yourself. I mean, building the house. Yes. yes. Uh huh. We. We did everything from the foundation, everything. We had help. We had a master uh, carpenter to show us how to do things. It was a group of families together? Yes, yeah, 16 families. And everybody had to work in, in different houses, help everybody. You know, like me here, I would have to, people would have to come and help me work and uh, move on ahead. I couldn't just work on my house alone. What did you do? Oh, I did a lot of work. Uh, I wired uh, electricity, did a lot of wiring on some of the houses, most of the houses. That house next door, I wired that house in three hours. Wow. Uh huh. And um, the tile, we laid the tile, the painting, uh, the doors, the door jams, all that painting. And, uh, Cement work, just just everything. It was fun too. Um, I got a big kick out of it. I I've enjoyed it doing all this work. You say you worked on it over a period of seven months altogether. How much time did you work on it during that? Uh, well, see, people were only supposed to come out in their spare time, but I I was just so anxious to have a home, and uh, I'd come out every day. You know, after you get so many hours, you could. Uh, work in your own home, and that's what I did. I tried to put in as many hours on the outside and then come to my home and, and work, do the finishing. Uh -huh. Do you have any idea of how many hours altogether you spent either building this house or working on the others? I don't really m remember. Uh, I have it all down since they said I don't remember how many hours. It's a lot of hours, though. So. It's a lot of work. It's really a lot of work, but it uh, pays off at the end. A lot of people need these homes. Uh, a lot of people think it's a racket, you know, but it's not. It's, it's um, a good thing. What do you mean people think it's a racket? I don't see well, how it could possibly be a racket. Well, a lot of people that don't, don't uh, they don't understand the program. They would think, you know, they try to uh, discourage people that was in the program. A lot of them did get discouraged. And uh, a lot of times I see people that were in the program and I say to myself, I bet they regret it because it is, it's good. We only pay 10 payments a year, $43.60 a month, for 10 months. And uh, December and April is for our taxes. And uh, I think it's good. We can eat and sleep. For, uh, we could have never afford another home uh, like uh, other companies where you have to pay a payment of $80, close to $100 and buy food and uh, clothing. They, they could never be done for us. People that work out in the fields all the time. Do you think you have more pride in your house and take care of it better for having built it yourself? Oh, I think so. I do. <laughs> I try to anyway. I was born and raised here in Farmersville. Then I got married and lived 10 years out to Sulary. Then we uh, got in this program, so we moved back to Farmersville. Martin Fuentes is our coordinator. He is the one that organized all the people. He went around uh, to see who wanted to build a home. And uh, we would have meetings at the Memorial Hall. And uh, we'd meet there every uh, Tuesday, Thursday. I don't remember, it's so long ago. Yeah. And uh, the people that were interested, they would have to go to these meetings every week. For a long period of time, I don't remember how long it was, but it was a long time and get uh, applications and, uh, you know, they would tell us about insurance and 
a lot of people would come in from, uh, say, uh, nursery, uh, a nursery guy would come in and tell us about landscaping. And we had a lot of meetings. You have to, you, uh, people have to be patient. Yep. And that's what people, they give up, I think. They're, uh, they don't have any patience. They don't want to be going to meetings and waiting around. They want to hurry up and get into things and start up. But we, we had a, we had a lot of meetings before we started the home. You said that there were 16 families that built houses together? Um, did they, if you work together with people over that long a period of time, do you get to be close friends with them? Do you continue to see each other afterwards or you get to hate each other? <laughs> well, it's, uh, you get to have friends, no friends. And of course, a lot of people, uh, there's gonna be some disagreement on things. Uh -huh. you know, it doesn't, it's not all smooth sailing, like they say. What was the hardest part about it all for you? Leaving my kids. You know, I'd have to, if they were going to school, get them off to school, and then going home at night, because I'd... See, I'm, uh, I don't know how to work right. I guess I'd come out here and I'd work all day long, and then have to go home at night time and make supper. We still eat at 7 or 8 o'clock at night. There's been some talk that um, with some of the later projects, some of the neighbors have not especially wanted, have not been happy about having self-help houses come into their neighborhoods. Did you have any of that kind of problem here? Oh, no. Oh, no, because on this side of town, um, it's all a uh, Mexican family, so you wouldn't have any trouble right there. A lot of people didn't want to get in here because they thought, they thought these houses were going to be built right. The people were going to build them, so they weren't going to come out right. But they did. I mean, you know, they thought they were going to come out all, uh, I don't know. You know what I mean. Uh, yeah, not all square, crooked. And, yeah. mm -hmm. But you learn all that, all the measuring, and, and uh, we learn all that. I would wonder if maybe because you're building it yourself in order to live in it, not just to sell it, but because it's going to be your house, maybe you're more careful than a professional carpenter might often be. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. A lot of people say these, we learn all that. I would wonder if maybe because you're building it yourself in order to live in it, not just to sell it, but because it's going to be your house, maybe you're more careful than a professional carpenter might often be. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. A lot of people say these homes are better than, than uh, the ones that uh, this side of Farmersville, and I remember going to see those homes. And uh, after they, uh, we finish here, we go just for curiosity. Me and my uh, neighbor would go see the homes over there on this side of Farmersville, where they were building some new homes. And we would see a lot of uh, work that uh, was they didn't do it like we would. Yeah. But, uh, do you think that uh, if more money were available for there to be more self-help houses, that more people would take advantage of the project? Do you think it's a good project? There's a lot of people in Farmersville that I tell them, you know, a lot of, especially a lot of young people that uh, I know that they work hard. I tell them to get in, but they, they don't want to. Uh, I think that they think these homes, maybe I shouldn't say it, uh, aren't good enough yet for them. That's what I think. <laughs> What do you mean? Well, uh, uh, here in Farmersville, like this, uh, these 16 homes, it's a lot of work and everything. Still yet, there's people that uh, they should get in, young couples, and uh, somehow I just feel that they don't think that the homes are good enough for, I don't know, I can't. Is the government actually giving you money for this, or is it a loan? It's not anything free. It's not anything free. It's, uh, we have to pay that money back. It's a loan. It's a loan from the government. They loaned us 7500 And uh, we built this house. I had about uh, $400 left over out of my loan. And I turned that back. And, um, and our payments are $43 a month for 10 months out of the year at 4% interest. Would you 33 agree? years to pay back if uh, we last that long. We could, people, it's an open contract. You can pay it back if, whenever you want to.
I've heard ever since I arrived in town, I've heard when your children go to Exeter schools, now they're going to be snubbed because you're from Farmersville. And I don't buy this. I don't think that's right at all because Kathy, she's enjoyed it all the way through and she belongs to various clubs in the mm -hmm. high school and to the advanced choir and everything. I don't think this is so. Well, and you uh, at home, you and your husband haven't been telling her continually that when she gets to exercise, she's going to be unhappy. Definitely. <laughs> and, and don't you think this helps a lot? Well, I think so. Yeah. What about your girl, Marion? I, I think that uh, I would be terribly wrong to encourage Andrea to be ashamed of Farmersville when her great-grandfather was uh, a product of Farmersville. Mm -hmm. So I think that I'd be very wrong in, in causing her to be ashamed of her heritage, right. since she is a fourth generation of the Hines family here in Farmersville. So uh, we have never made her feel that Farmersville is a reason for her uh, success or for her downfall. Right. It's, it's up to her. I do feel that the, the teenagers, though, have a legitimate gripe as far as we don't have enough for them, enough places for them or fact, what do we have? The GTOs are working now and they've got a good group going. Uh, the uh, pool hall has a reputation. I don't know. Uh, we grew up where pool halls, you just didn't, you just didn't go to pool halls and now all of a sudden it's suddenly fashionable to take the whole family to the pool hall. So I, I will bypass that. I, I don't like pool halls. And, you know, they just might be a nice place to go to now, but I still don't care for them. Kathy, I still can't see that why the kids keep saying they have nothing to do here. They have their church groups and then right. everything. There's a lot for the kids to do here. I never have this kind of gripe with my girls. Mm -hmm. I never have. I think this is one of the reasons, though, because you are active with your youngster. Mm -hmm. I'm very active with the Methodist youngsters, and we mm -hmm. have things to do. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, we forget about the youngsters who don't have things to do. Your child has enough to do. Yes. Mine has yes. enough to do yes. and yours. Right. But, yeah, but still, we're not thinking about those youngsters who don't have a church that provides things for them to do or don't have families who provide for them. And we're, we're negligent in thinking of those youngsters who don't have things but to do. Marion, you go and invite the kids to attend these various activities, and they're not interested. I mean, uh, a majority of them aren't. Uh, Chuck and I have tried this to take them on snow parties mm -hmm. and different things, but they're just not interested. Well, the boys we heard in the interview, all right, they complained there was nothing to do. I bet if you set up a snow party uh -huh. or a square dance mm -hmm. or a dance, I I'm inclined to agree, I bet this same, the same three boys would not show up. It would be square or uh -huh. corny or the parents were there and they're putting a wet blanket on everything. Uh, I think lots of times that people that have, these kids that have nothing to do, what they want to do, they know they're not going to, it's not going to be approved of anyway. So don't you think that here too, you're providing things. Now we're having a nice party, so you come along, or we're having a snow party. This isn't mm -hmm. what they want, mm -hmm. because Visalia has a skating rink. Mm -hmm. If you want to skate, you go. This is your choice. Mm -hmm. These kids don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. Either your church, my church, or your organization mm -hmm. invites them. Mm -hmm. But this isn't what they want. They they want think, they want a choice. They want something to gripe about. I mean, now I've got three girls, and they all belong to the Girl Scouts. They wear the uniforms to school. The kids tease them, they, they call them names, because it's square, you know. I mean, it's not that kids don't, I don't think that uh, they don't have that much, I don't know, kids just don't, some of these kids aren't really interested in doing anything except griping. Yes, but, but your, your girls are active in Girl Scouts. Why? Their mother is a Girl Scout leader. My daughter was a brownie, a Girl Scout, and so on, because her mother was right there. This is what I'm saying. I was always there working with my daughter. Mm -hmm. But what about these youngsters whose mother is working out in the fields? She can't be a Girl Scout leader. What about these youngsters who, whose fathers are so busy earning something for the kids to eat that he, he can't provide entertainment? And this is where we fall down because... Right. As I say, my child is provided for, yours is provided for, but what about these other kids who have no one to provide for them? 
and these are the ones we're letting down. Is there any solution to that? Yes, well, I yeah, think that there is a start. It's just uh, here again, you have your GTOs. I think that we need uh, our community to get together to start fundraising uh, for a skating rink, a swimming pool, yeah. or something where these kids can go to. Now, uh, what would be the best one? I, I don't know. I'm sure there would be more qualified people who could pick out what would be the best for farmers and for these kids involved. But we do need something for them. And I wish that, uh, that our Lions and Chamber, the school, and the parents, the community as a whole, we could get together in a big fundraising. Look what we did with the library. Now, I, I wish, I wanted a library in Farmersville, and this is wonderful. Wouldn't it have been nice if we could have been working on something for our kids, too? Yes. Well, at the last council meeting, they voted a building for the GTOs to meet. Mm -hmm. So this is a step up. They, now, they, they don't know if they're going to be able to maintain this for them or if the kids will get to keep it. Mm -hmm. But it's a, it, it's a start. You know, you just can't come out with everything at once. And to say that the parents and the community are not interested, I think they're wrong. I think we are. But we're young. We're just, our town is. We're starting, just starting to grow. I think these things take time. When you recognize a problem, then you're beginning to think of a solution in merely recognizing that there is, that a problem exists. If you had a opportunity to tell the President of the United States the thing, <laughs> the thing that you'd like most for farmers, though, what would it be? I would say decent housing for everyone. Housing to, to uh, that could make a family, uh, that would enable a family to take its place in society. Because I think that there is nothing more important to a family than to be able to have a, a home, a decent home. We need industry here, too. Well, I'll put them in the house first, and then, and then give them a job. <laughs> you know, this uh, this self-help housing over here, uh, some people were just having fits. Boy, they weren't going to have them living, living next to them. I think that's nonsense. Uh, when my husband was on the council, he uh, went out and talked to one of these men. And he said for the first time in his life, he had something to leave his kids. Mm -hmm. And he says his father had nothing to leave him. Has it caused any distress of the self-help homes being built amongst the other homes? Yes, it has. It's yes, it has. quite a bit yeah. of griping, but there's some behind our business back there that are kept up beautifully. And they would be neighbors to be proud of, I'm sure. The well-kept self-help home is far more typical than the self-help home where the yard isn't kept because I think uh, mm -hmm. one stands out in my mind. Out of all the self-help homes we have, mm -hmm. one stands out in my mind. And I think that's a pretty good record. Uh, you can even tell a difference in the kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't you think? Oh, yeah. I agree. Uh, there's two that come to our house. And... Uh, they come over and fool around with Kathy over there, and there's a difference. When you speak of these kids or these people, think of all you have to do is think of yourself. What does it do to you to have a nice home, or what does it do to your youngsters to have a nice home? So, when you speak of these people, they're they're people just as we are. Sure. And their their hopes and their desires are the same as ours. And I think it's so wrong to uh, set them aside and to. Uh, peer into their lives when they, they shouldn't be considered as these people and, and us. We're drawing a line right there. When we first came in to try to make a film record of this town, there was some reticence. Why, why do you think that would be? I think a lot of these people have been here a long time. They're very set in their ways, and when a stranger comes in, they want to know what he's doing here, <laughs> how come he's here, do we know anything about him. I think a lot of us are that way. I mean, that's my opinion on it. Well, I think a lot of it, too, is why do they want to waste our money? Uh, it's nonsense. You know, we don't really need it. Everybody knows everybody. We don't need to look at each other on, <laughs> at each other on film, you know? Well, I think this is whenever people come in to do something and then they're, not, they're asking nothing and donating their time, then people begin backing off and wondering, <laughs> now, why are they doing this, you know? Why should they be doing this? But I wasn't really sure uh, what the purpose of uh, the film was. 
We're getting tremendous cooperation, actually. What we've been doing for the last four weeks is just about what we're doing here tonight. Mm -hmm. The best ideas, perhaps, for any town come from the people who live there, not from someone else.